Vittal Rao was born in Kerala. He was married and lived as a householder until the age of 36. During those times, he had to face many trials and tribulations, both financially and domestically. Those dire conditions made him inquire deeply into the meaning of life. An intense spiritual transformation occurred and he was filled with an overwhelming wave of dispassion. He realized the futility of pursuing worldly pleasures and the thirst for everlasting peace and happiness welled up within him. The teachings of Sri Ramakrishna Parmahamsa, Swami Vivekananda and Swami Ram Tirtha inspired him and he became convinced that God alone could give one eternal peace and absolute happiness. Thus, the path of devotion and surrender opened within him and he felt irresistibly urged to follow it. All attachments to family, friends, dropped away just as a fully ripened fruit falls down from the tree. Noticing Vittal Rao's waning interest in worldly pursuits and increasing love and devotion towards God, his father initiated him into the Ram Mantra. Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram Vittal Rao intuitively added, Om, to each repetition of this mantra for his sadhana and changed it to, Om Shri Ram Jai Ram Jai Jai Ram. The mantra soon took hold of him. Around December 1922, he went forth in quest of God as a mendicant sadhu. Never accepting money and never planning his journey, Vittal Rao moved around like a dry leaf swept by the wind. At Sri Rangam, while taking a dip in the holy river Kaveri, he offered his white clothes to the sacred river and took on ochre robes. Prompted by his chosen Lord Ram, he assumed the name Ramdas, meaning servant of Rama. Ramdas never again referred to himself in the first person. Swami Ramdas' journey continued and he found himself in holy Arunachala. There he met Bhagavan Sri Ramana Maharshi for the first time. He fell prostrate at his feet. Knowing that Sri Bhagavan knew English, Ramdas addressed him in that language, Maharaj, here stands before you a humble slave. Have pity on him. His only prayer to you is to give him your blessings. About this experience, Swami Ramdas has said, the Maharshi, turning his beautiful eyes towards Ramdas and looking intently for a few minutes into his eyes as though he was pouring into Ramdas his blessings, nodded his head to say he had blessed. A thrill of inexpressible joy coursed through the frame of Ramdas, his whole body quivering like a leaf in the breeze. In that ecstatic state he left the Maharshi's presence and went to spend a few days in a cave on the slopes of Arunachala, constantly chanting the sacred name of his beloved Ram. This was the first occasion that he went into solitude. During this period of solitude, he never bathed, shaved, or cut his hair. When he ate, he only ate very little. After 21 days, when he came out of the cave, he saw a strange, all-pervasive light, everything was Ram and there was nothing but Ram. He describes the revelation, and it came one morning when, lo, the entire landscape changed. Wherever Ramdas looked, all was Ram, nothing but Ram. Everything was ensured by Ram, vivid, marvelous and rapturous, the trees, the shrubs, the ants, the cows, the cats, the dogs, even inanimate things pulsated with the marvelous presence of the one Ram. And Ramdas danced in joy, like a boy who, when given a lovely present, can't help breaking out into a dance. And so it was with Ramdas, he danced with joy and rushed at a tree in front, which he embraced because it was not a tree, but Rama himself. 
A man was passing by. Ramdas ran towards him and embraced him, calling out, Ram, O oh Ram. The man got scared and bolted. But Ramdas gave him a chase and dragged him to his cave. The man noted that Ramdas had not a tooth in his mouth and so felt a little reassured. At least the loony would not be able to bite him. Following his experience at Arunachala, Ramdas continued his travels for another eight years to many parts of India. It was during this time that he had his first experience of Nirvikalpa Samadhi in the Panchapandava Caves at Kadri in Mandalore. About this experience it has been written, for some days, his meditation consisted of only the mental repetition of the Ram Mantra. Then, the mantra having stopped automatically, he beheld a small circular light before his mental vision which yielded him thrills of delight. This experience having continued for some days, he felt a dazzling light like lightning flashing before his eyes which ultimately permeated and absorbed him. Now an inexpressible bliss filled every pore of his physical frame. When this state was coming on, he would at the outset become oblivious of his hands and feet and gradually his entire body. Lost in this trance state, he would sit for two or three hours. Still, a subtle awareness of external objects was maintained in this state. In these earlier stages, this vision was occasionally lost, pulling him down to the old life of diversity with its turmoil of likes and dislikes, joy and grief. But he would be drawn in again into the silence and calmness of the spirit. A stage was soon reached when this dwelling in the spirit became a permanent and unvarying experience with no more falling off from it, and then the still more exalted state came on, his inner vision projected outwards. First, a glimpse of this new vision dazzled him off and on. This was the working of the divine love. He would feel as though his very soul had expanded like the blossoming of a flower and by a flash, as it were, enveloped the whole universe, embracing all in a subtle halo of love and light. This experience granted him a bliss, infinitely greater than he had in the previous state. Now it was that Ramdas began to cry out, Ram is all. It is he as everybody and everything. This condition was for some months coming on and vanishing. When it wore away, he would instinctively go into solitude. When it was present, he freely mixed in the world, preaching the glory of divine love and bliss. With this externalized vision, Ramdas' mission began. Its fullness and magnificence was revealed to him during his stay in the Kadri cave and here the experience became more sustained and continuous. The vision of God shone in his eyes and he would see none but Ram in all objects. Now, wave after wave of joy arose in him. He realized he had attained a consciousness full of splendor, power and bliss. After years of wandering he settled in a small ashram set up by one of his devotees at Kasragod, Kerala. Eventually, he settled down in Kanjangar, where the present Anandashram is situated. He had great reverence for all saints and sages. Whenever he referred to them, he would say that Ramdas was only a child of all the saints. Naturally, he had great respect and reverence for Bhagavan Sri Ramana. Of Sri Bhagavan he has said, Sri Ramana Maharshi was in all respects a remarkable saint. After realizing the Eternal, he lived in the Eternal. His advent was a veritable blessing on the earth. By his contact, thousands were saved from the clutches of doubt and sorrow. 
He lived what he preached and preached what he lived. He exerted a wonderful influence and created in the hearts of ignorant men and women a consciousness of their inherent divinity. He awakened the sleeping soul to the awareness of its immortal and all blissful nature. By his very presence, he rid the hearts of people of their base and unbridled passions. The faithful derived the greatest benefit by communion with him. As Swami Ramdas had attained realization through uninterrupted chanting of the divine name of Ram along with contemplation on the attributes of God, he always extolled the virtue of Namajpa in sadhana. Based upon his personal experience, Swami Ramdas assured all seekers that Namajapa would lead them to the supreme heights of realization and oneness with the Almighty. The greatness of Swami Ramdas was that he converted Nana Marga into full Bhakti Marga. On the power of the divine name Swami Ramdas has this to say. The divine name is pregnant with a great power to transform the world. It can create light where there is darkness, love where there is hate, order where there is chaos, and happiness where there is misery. The name can change the entire atmosphere of the world from one of bitterness, ill will and fear to that of mutual love, goodwill and trust. For the name is God Himself. To bring nearer, the day of human liberation from the sway of hatred and misery, the way is the recognition of the supremacy of God over all things and keeping the mind in tune with the universal by the chanting of the divine name. In this connection, Sri Bhagavan once told Devraja Mudaliyar, the name is God and quoted the Bible, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God.